Welcome to your airplane news update. This week is the week of April 12, 2021, and we got four topics for you, actually four and a half, I should say. Uh, United is in the news. This time it's for something good. Uh, we have a flying Subaru motorcycle. What is that all about? You'll find out. This is a really interesting concept. We're going to talk about sun and fun, which is uh, happening right now as you're listening to this video. And then we've got a couple industry briefs, uh, short stories about what's going on in the industry. So let's get to it. <laughs> First thing this week is United is in the news for something good, somewhat. Uh, United is looking to hire 300 pilots uh, as the demand is starting to increase. We've talked about airlines starting to hire again uh, after a year of or year, year and a half of uh, nothing happening. So this is good. This is a, a good forecast. Uh, they actually retired a thousand pilots since September, which is quite a bit. Uh, people going on uh, leave or being asked to retire. And then the airline is actually reporting that there was 1 million passengers a day that went through different checkpoints in the last three weeks. So that's kind of a big deal. Uh, it's a big deal, but it's still half of what we saw at the same time last year or in 2019, I should say. So uh, I'm going to put a link down here so you can see what's going on with United. Another thing going on with United is they're planning to open their own flight school. And, uh, and the goal is to create 10,000 pilots, 10,000 pilots by 2030. And, uh, and they purchase this school and they're going to start doing training. The first class is 20 pilots expected to begin in uh, Q3 of 2021. And they're expecting to graduate by mid of 2022. So that's kind of right around the corner if you think about it. Um, they're hoping to increase the diversity in the industry. That's one of the reasons they wanted to have their own flight school. Uh, no flight training costs. Now, this is not free training, okay? This is training that uh, United is, you're gonna have to pay for it, but uh, we've seen airlines in the past do this kind of thing. Uh, Lufthansa had something similar in the past, but this is something, quite frankly, that's been missing. Now, flight training is what I, I used to do in my previous life. Um, I've, I've been asking airlines to get into this gig for a long time and, and sponsoring primarily uh, candidates like other airlines do in Europe and other countries. And, uh, and this is something that's much needed. So uh, United said they were going to put $1.2 million in scholarships. And then uh, JP Morgan said they were going to put $1.2 million as well. So $2.4 million going to scholarships to hopefully help people get into aviation and become pilots and help with this pilot shortage that's uh, going to be looming very soon. Next thing is Subaru, Subaru and their flying motorcycle. This is a really interesting concept. Now you can see the pictures going on right now uh, of the patent, and this is called an air, uh, land and air vehicle. So this would be a motorcycle on the ground using an actual motorcycle engine, gas powered engine. And then as soon as you wanna take off, those wings are going to deploy, and then you have a tilt rotor uh, motor that's going to be basically providing lift. So this is a vertical takeoff and landing. And then once it gets into that configuration, once you get to altitude, then you can start flying forward. Uh, very similar to the uh, the V22 Osprey from Boeing. And this is a really interesting concept. I, I, I can't imagine seeing this on the road, quite frankly. It looks fairly bulky. Uh, I don't want to be too critical of it because I think this is still a, a cool concept and a cool idea. Uh, but these wings would basically just open up. We've seen uh, flying cars, the concept of flying cars in the past, trying to do the same thing. And uh, none of them took off, bad pun, but uh, hopefully this is something, I don't know, that we see eventually happening around the road. Um, just, we'll find out. The third thing this week is Sun and Fun. Sun and Fun is going on at the moment. Uh, it started on April 13, a couple days ago. And uh, it's basically the good old Sun and Fun that some of you may be uh, familiar with, except uh, the some of the COVID restrictions. So there's still some social distancing, still have to wear masks. Uh, the Navy Blue Angels are going to be there. They're going to be practicing on Thursday, and then they're going to be performing on uh, f Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So uh, kind of exciting uh, to see actual air shows happening again. This is something that we've been needing. Uh, so hopefully everything goes well as far as COVID is concerned, and uh, hopefully we can continue doing these things every week. So I'm going to put a link down here to the AOPA article. And uh, hopefully if you live in Florida or if you're close enough, head over there and go take a look. And lastly, to finish, we get two industry briefs. The first one is the, the, the 737, Boeing 737 MAX is in the news again. Uh, this time they're having grounding issues, electrical grounding issues that uh, could be affecting the uh, horizontal stabilizer. Now, it looks like this is uh, kind of very 
localized issue, but Boeing has told 16 of their customers that they should be addressing the issue before doing any further flights. So hopefully this is not something that um, creates too much of an issue again with the 737 MAX, but uh, we'll find out. And the last thing is Virgin Atlantic uh, is introducing their new suborbital space plane. It's called the VSS Imagine. And you can see the pictures right here. And this is the third generation of spaceship. And what they plan on doing with this is they plan on building another one called the VSS Inspire. And that spaceship is designed to be picked up, carried to about 50,000 feet, and then basically flying on its own after that. So um, kind of a new mode of transportation flying at much, much higher altitude, uh, suborbital uh, altitude, get much better performance, much better fuel efficiency, and then using obviously a carrier to get all the way up there allows them to save on fuel and then go a further distance afterwards. So uh, cool concept. Uh, they've been at it for a long time. Like I said, this is a third version and uh, hopefully we start to see some of these uh, happening in the future. Uh, I'd love to get on one of those flight 50,000 feet at uh, fast speed and go places and not waste time in an airplane. All right, this is all I have. If, we wanted, if you wanna see the UAS news update. This week I'm talking about a new drone, the Mavic Air 2S uh, coming out from DJI. There's a new smart controller from Hotel. Uh, we're going to talk about the Mars drone that has been a little bit of delay and then we'll have some Pilot Institute news as well. So head over to our uh, regular channel for drones if you want that information. And then in the meantime, fly safe and I'll see you guys next week.